stove. It's basically a honey stove on steroids. And instead of being a hexagon, it's an octagon. A couple of additional plates mean that area inside the stove is greater. You can put more fuel in there, create more flame, and give a wider surface area to cook on. And I'm going to be using a stainless steel plate, which I'm going to experiment with. I'm going to place it on top of the hive as a way of cooking, because I find that the smoke from the woods as it's burning, it affects the flavour of the meat and also there's stuff in the smoke that you really don't want to be ingesting. So I figured I could protect the meat by putting the, the stainless steel plate over the top to uh, cook on that way. I've also got a pack grill. This is a Potter's pack grill that is recommended on the Backpacking Light website by Bob Cartwright to be used with it. And that goes over the top like that and I can even use the two in conjunction for want to reduce the heat. So I'm going to cook a pheasant now and using the high stove, stainless steel plate, let's see how it turns out. So my first method is using a sheet of stainless steel that I ordered. I think it's 306 grade, I can't remember precisely. I'll, I'll put a link onto the video afterwards to um, confirm that. And I'm doing this because I don't like the juices dropping down into the fire. I don't like the smoke from the flames coming up and um, affecting the flavour of the meat. So I just thought I'd give this a go and see how it works. I'll put some more fuel on now so it looks like it's dying down a bit. Having said that, I don't want to put too much on, so I'll crisp it on the outside, but it won't cook through in the middle. Now I've switched to the pack grill, and so far, not too bad. Flames building up a little bit. So now I've gone for the full configuration. Pack grill, stainless steel plate. It's up off the flames just enough. It seems to be cooking through well got a good heat on it. It's going to keep feeding the fire now, give it another 20 minutes. I think I might leave it like this for a while now. More of a close-up. Good fire going. Got the pheasant on the stainless steel plate. Sitting on the pack grill. And what a lovely spot be looking forward to a nice juicy pheasant. Good fishing here too. Next film I'll do, I'll cook a fish that I've caught from the river. Looking good. So that's the last of my dry wood which I've brought with me because it's so wet and damp at the moment. It's early January and the conditions are really damp so brought my own wood because it's nice and dry and seasoning it at home. So I'm on the last of the wood now. As it burns down to embers, I've put the steel plate back directly on top of the high stove, which I'm really impressed with. I really like the high stove. Okay, it's extra weight, a little bit more space in your pack, but it still falls down flat. And it's just such a lovely thing to cook with. Really impressed with the steel plate. It's been cooking that pheasant really, really well. Up to about the half an hour now, Mark and um, it should be done fairly soon. Just going to give it another turn. So it's done what I wanted it to do, which is to keep the smoke and the, uh, the stuff that comes out of the wood, like creosote and stuff. You really don't want that in your food. And I know people will tell me, well, you shouldn't be cooking on flame, you should be cooking on ember. But sometimes you haven't got time for that. And there's heat there being wasted, so use it. It means you're constantly feeding the fire, keeping that temperature going. But when it's down to embers, they don't last long enough. You've got to keep feeding it anyway, and then it's back to flame again. So better to protect the food. Using a steel plate like this does exactly what I want it to. So the food should taste a whole lot better 
and I shouldn't be getting some of those really nasty toxic chemicals in my body that the, the, the wood is producing as it burns. Let's give it a go. Well, for a first attempt, it's pretty good. It's cooked through, juicy. It's a little bit crisp on the outside, more crispy than I'd like it. But overall, a way of cooking the pheasant, it's worked out really successfully. I'm happy with that. There you go. <coughs> Nothing left but ashes and bones. It was delicious. That was a really great way to cook a pheasant cooked right through. I devoured it. I gorged on it. I polished it off in about five minutes. I must have been hungrier than I thought. <laughs> Great pheasant. Come out for a trip for the morning to cook a pheasant, spatchcock style. Oh. I've come out for the morning down to the river to cook a Take three. I've come down to the river for the morning to cook a pheasant, spatchcock style. Can't say. down to the river for the morning to cook a pheasant, spatchcock style, and I'm going to use a hive stove, which is a honey stove on steroids. <laughs>